News 4 San Antonio, Zach Hedrick is live at police headquarters now to tell us why the victims were shot. Farm workers in Austin took to the Capitol today to commemorate a historic strike for workers' rights. Questions about open carry are circulating after a protester in Dallas was seen openly carrying his long gun in public. Randy Evie, we're live in front of this makeshift memorial where 23-year-old Zachary Benavides was shot and killed while he was at work. It must have been so exhilarating being out there. And there's my family and they're oh. watching right now I from Panama. Hello, Yami's family. Yay. Now, as far as the complex goes, the property manager says that there were no red flags when they first hired Henderson. And right now they are taking proactive measures at this time. The community is saying goodbye to a hero tonight whose battle with cancer ended today. Randy, we're told this area in particular, the intersection of Loop 410 and Perrin Vital, like you said, they see a lot of panhandling and asking drivers for anything that they can get. Friends and family members are coming together this weekend to remember the life of Crystal Espinosa. The mother of two was six months pregnant with her third child when police say she was stabbed to death last week by her boyfriend. Fox San Antonio Zach Hedrick tells us how you can help the family. There's another benefit for the family tomorrow at Zombies Bar from 11 a.m. to 7 p.m. And to find out more details, you can go to our website, foxsanantonio.com. On the crime watch tonight, a fight at Oasis Bar spilled out to the streets near Embassy Oaks and Inner Park Boulevard. Police say one man pulled out a knife and stabbed the other. The victim was taken to University Hospital in serious condition. The suspect ran away and police haven't been able to find him. And police are looking for two men who robbed a store at gunpoint and then took off. It happened near Northwest Loop 410 in Bandera at a pawn shop. The men nabbed money and jewelry before getting away in a vehicle with out-of-state plates. And police are at a loss after bullets went flying through a man's home, hitting him in the back. The victim said he was inside when he heard shots coming from outside his home on El Monte Boulevard near Santa Paula Avenue. Bullet holes were found through a bedroom wall and window. Police don't have any suspects right now, and the victim didn't see anyone outside the house. Now, he was taken to the University Hospital in stable condition. Children who have lost their loved ones to senseless gun violence were honored today at the inaugural Prince and Princess Benefit Gala. It was organized by Gifts of Love from Above. The nonprofit was founded by a woman whose brother was shot to death five years ago. Kim Anderson says her brother left behind three children, and watching them grieve encouraged her to do something that would benefit other kids dealing with loss. Delane, horrific doesn't even begin to describe this type of story. You don't even need to be a parent to really feel that anger, that emotion from this situation. Now, just into our newsroom moments ago, we learned from CPS that the little girl has, in fact, a fractured wrist, bruises covering her entire body. And right now where we're standing, we're right behind the area where the abuse took place. That little girl tied up to a door while the other little toddler chained up to a tree with nothing but a bowl of water. If you don't feel something from this story, I mean, I'm getting goosebumps right now just thinking about it. A three-year-old girl screaming for help while tied up to a door. This is a sick, disturbing, horrific crime. And a two-year-old boy chained outside to the ground. There was no slack in the chain. Uh, his pants were down. You could tell he'd been there for a while. It's a horrible scene, so hard for many of us to swallow. The little girl is currently in ICU. So horrible, it even brought deputies to tears. It makes you wonder what somebody's thinking. How could they do this? It's, it's just horrible. How could you do that? I just can't see that in my heart. Thursday at around midnight, deputies were called out to this house on Chipping Drive on a welfare check. There they found the two toddlers tied up, malnourished and dehydrated. Six other children were inside the house, the parents nowhere in sight. Something like this was going on this far from my house. It's, it's just ridiculous to see that. It's terrible. Like I said, I wouldn't have, if I had any idea of inkling that there was children being tied up for for any reason, any reason, I would have said something. Deputies have arrested Portia Phillips, the 34-year-old mother of six kids who were found inside the home. But for these neighbors standing outside watching that house in horror. I hope those people never get their kids back. That will never be enough. 
I hope that they have to think about this for the rest of their life. A decorated war veteran with only a speeding ticket on his record. 32 year old Alfred Henderson now faces a charge of indecent exposure. I was just like, wow, you know, got me out of surprise. The person you described has been walking around here, you know, with plenty of girls, I guess you could say. Police say on Monday, Henderson was showing an apartment to two young women at the Wood Hollow Apartments when he took off his pants and began to touch himself inappropriately. The affidavit also says Henderson touched both women inappropriately. He's showing them an apartment, you know, they're expecting to see an apartment and all of a sudden, you know, here I am. According to his LinkedIn profile, Henderson has been working at the Wood Hollow Apartments for about four years as the assistant community director and was even recognized as employee of the quarter. Before that, it says he counseled soldiers recommended for reenlistment with the U.S. Army. You want to ensure that you have references and you can verify those references. So Miguel Segura with the local Better Business Bureau recommends whether you're looking online to rent an apartment or buy a house. Make sure you do your homework. You want to find out that they are established, they are trustworthy. So how long have they been operating? Uh, are they familiar with the area that you want to move in? Especially if you're coming in from out of town, these are important questions. Uh, as, a, as a potential resident. Not to mention visiting the BBB's website for customer complaints so you as a consumer know exactly what you could be getting yourself into. Now as far as the complex goes, the property manager says that there were no red flags when they first hired Henderson and right now they are taking proactive measures at this time.